Hello learners. Welcome to Manifested e-learning platform. I'm your teacher Mwaniki Nyaga. We are learning chemistry and our topic is energy changes in physical and chemical processes. In our previous lesson, we learned about endothermic reactions. So in this topic, we are going to discuss exothermic reactions. The objective for this lesson is that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define what an exothermic reaction is. So you should be able to define what an exothermic reaction is. So an exothermic reaction is a reaction So it's a reaction that involves loss of energy So it's a reaction that involves loss of energy to the surrounding. So this energy is lost in form of heat. We are going to demonstrate this exothermic reaction using a chemical called sodium hydroxide. So demonstrating an exothermic reaction using sodium hydroxide solid. Then the procedure is procedure number one, you should wrap a clean So wrap a clean 250 ml plastic beaker using a tissue paper. And the purpose of this tissue paper is to prevent gain or loss of heat to and from the surrounding. Procedure number two is secure. So secure the tissue paper using a rubber band. So the rubber band is now to prevent the tissue paper from coming off the plastic beaker. Our procedure number three is measure measure 100 ml of distilled water
and put into the plastic beaker. So I'm measuring 100 ml of distilled water and put into the plastic beaker. Of course, this measuring of this distilled water, you can use a measuring cylinder or you can use a burette. Then procedure number four, measure the temperature of distilled water. using a thermometer. So the water you've put in the a plastic beaker, then you measure the temperature of that water using a thermometer. Of procedure number five is add two spatula fulls. Add two spatula fulls of sodium hydroxide and pellets into the distilled water. In the beaker. So into the distilled water, which is in the beaker. Procedure number six. You stir the mixture. until it dissolves using a thermometer and record the highest stable temperature. And the highest stable temperature. So start the mixture until it dissolves using a thermometer and record the highest stable temperature. So that is the procedure you are supposed to follow for you to be able to carry out this experiment on, uh, on demonstrating exothermic reactions. So you have seen that procedure number one is to wrap a clean 250 ml plastic beaker, then using a tissue paper. And you've seen that the function of the tissue paper is to prevent gain of energy from the surrounding and loss of energy to the surrounding. Then procedure number two, secure the tissue paper, which is now uh, on the surface or on the outer surface of the plastic beaker, then using the rubber bud so that now it does not come off the plastic beaker. Our procedure number three is measure 100 ml of distilled water and put into the plastic beaker. So you measure 100 ml of distilled water using either measuring cylinder or a burette and put that water into uh, the plastic beaker. Then procedure number four, is measure the temperature of that distilled water you've put into the plastic beaker using a thermometer. Then procedure five, and two spatula fulls of sodium hydroxide and pellets into the distilled water in the mixture, into the distilled water which is in the beaker. And lastly, then you start the mixture. Now the, this, this mixture is now a mixture of sodium hydroxide and distilled water. So you start the mixture using this thermometer and record the highest stable temperature which is going to be uh, realized. So you are going to record your results in the form of a table and the table should look like this. So we have the final 
final temperature. temperature change so final temperature all of them I'll mention they are they are in degrees Celsius So experiment you are doing using sodium hydroxide. So we have the final temperature, which is the highest stable temperature realized when you, that is the highest stable temperature of the mixture. Then the initial temperature was the temperature of water before adding sodium hydroxide solution. And of course, the temperature change will be the difference between the final temperature and the initial temperature. When you put sodium hydroxide pellets in distilled water, sodium hydroxide solid dissolves in water, leading to production of heat to the surrounding. Therefore, what is expected is that the final temperature will be higher than the initial temperature. So the final temperature is now that temperature of the mixture, and the mixture in this case is sodium hydroxide and distilled water. Then the initial temperature is the temperature of distilled water alone. So it will be, let's say for example, the initial temperature of water was something like 23 degrees Celsius. So you expect that this temperature is lower than the final temperature because dissolving sodium hydroxide in water leads to production of heat to the surrounding. So the temperature is going to rise. Then you can take an example of maybe it will rise up to 29 degrees Celsius. So 29 degrees Celsius is the highest stable temperature of the mixture of sodium hydroxide and distilled water. Then the initial temperature is the temperature of water. So that now the temperature change will be the difference between the highest temperature, which is the final temperature, and it's 29 degrees Celsius, and the initial temperature, which is 23 degrees Celsius. So the difference will be just 29, you subtract 23, which will give you 6 degrees Celsius. So 6 degrees Celsius is our temperature change. So that is the experiment to demonstrate an exothermic reaction, a reaction which is now leading to production of heat to the surrounding, because you've said that is what an exothermic reaction is all about. So just to recap on what we have just said, I've said that an exothermic reaction, it is a reaction that involves loss of energy, and this energy is lost in form of heat to the surrounding. Then you can demonstrate this exothermic reaction then using sodium hydroxide solid. So this sodium hydroxide. So the procedure, we say that number one, you just need to wrap a plastic beaker, 250 ml volume, then using a tissue paper, 
and they've seen that this tissue paper is to prevent gain of heat or loss of heat to the surrounding. Then you are securing this tissue paper, which you've wrapped the plastic beaker using the rubber band. So the rubber band is just to ensure that the, the tissue paper does not come off uh, the plastic beaker in the course of your experiment. The number three, you measure 100 ml of distilled water and put it into the plastic beaker. Then number four, you measure the temperature of that distilled water using a thermometer before you've started or before you've added sodium hydroxide uh, pellets. Then now number five, you need to add two spatula fulls of sodium hydroxide pellets into the distilled water in the beaker. Lastly, you need to stir, once you've added the sodium hydroxide pellets into the water which is in the beaker, then you stir that mixture. And you're stirring that mixture using a thermometer. Now this thermometer, you're recording the temperature change. And you're supposed to record the highest stable temperature. So the highest stable temperature, that point at which it is, or it will stop rising, that will be the highest stable temperature. And that is now what you are going to record as your final temperature. So with this kind of a table, you are supposed to record the final temperature, which is now the highest stable temperature of the mixture. The initial temperature, which is the temperature of the, the distilled water before ending uh, sodium hydroxide and pellets and the temperature change is now the change in temperature between or the difference between the final temperature and the initial temperature which in our case you have gotten is 29 you subtract 23 then you get six degrees celsius so the reason why maybe i'm coming up with 23 degrees celsius is because it is close to the room temperature. The room temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius. So that's why I've come up with 23 degrees Celsius. So once you put now this sodium hydroxide and pellets into this water, which is having 23 degrees Celsius, then the temperature is now going to rise to 29 degrees Celsius, meaning that heat is being lost to the surrounding. So that is our lesson today. Then I will leave you with an assignment. Define what an exothermic reaction is. So that brings us to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson, we are going to talk about bond breaking and bond formation in chemical and physical processes. Thank you. Thank you for choosing to study with us. For more information, you can call us on 0724 173845.